Hello, today on Fed Talk we have Fernando Torado uh, running for 78th District. Thank you for coming here today. Thank you. Uh, can you give us a brief uh, history of where you grew up and, and how you started your, I guess, your political candidacy? Sure. Uh, I was born and raised in Washington Heights. Uh, I went to SUNY Farmingdale and SUNY Stony Brook. Uh, I then came to the city's Department of Health, worked there for 13 years. I also worked as the district manager for Community 47, which covers Fordham Road, Bedford Park, uh, Kingsbridge Heights, and uh, Norwood. And I was there for about almost five years. I did uh, another year and a half out in Long Island with a nonprofit doing a disaster, uh, disaster recovery and economic development. Plan. And then I came back to the Bronx. I now work at Lincoln College at the uh, Small Business Development Center. And uh, in discussions with a number of people in my community, I was encouraged to run. I made the decision earlier this year, and here I am, running for the uh, assembly. Now, the 78th district, what does that cover? Uh, so it covers areas from uh, Belmont to Bedford Park, from Southern Boulevard to about uh, Kingsbridge Road, all the way up to University Avenue, Cedric Avenue. Uh, it also goes all the way up north to Marshall New Parkway. Uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, uh, organizations and, uh, and structures in the area, such as uh, the Kingsbridge Armory, the Botanical Gardens, the Bronx Zoo, the Little Italy. Uh, so. so, before we hit on those topics regarding uh, what your district covers, um, can you give us some background on your, your education? Like, uh, did you Were you in some kind of a political debate team? And sure. Or? So actually when I went to SUNY Farmingdale, I studied uh, biomedical engineering technology. That's um, a mouthful. Yes, it is. Uh, and then when I went over to uh, SUNY Stony Brook, that's when I became more interested in history and political science. So I graduated with my bachelor's in political science from Stony Brook. Which is one of my favorite subjects, uh, Mr. Acosta. Acosta is my professor in Fordham. Very good times, uh, great subjects to cover. Um, now that you're, now, so what, what is your platform that you're running on? So there are obviously many issues in the district. Uh, the three that I feel that are of uh, great importance are economic development, education, and environmental issues, and environmental justice issues in particular. And you know, now, to, to go on a brief uh, discussion, um, what have you been doing to I guess progressing in your in your district. Since you're coming in the seventy eighth district, I'm assuming a lot of your work is surrounding in that area. So uh, a lot of the work that I did previously as the district manager covered that uh, the seventy eighth district. Uh, one of the major projects that I was involved with was the uh, Webster Avenue rezoning. Uh, basically, it was a combination of uh, economic incentives for uh, rezoning Webster Avenue. At the same time, we did a lot of neighborhood preservation so that one and two family homes weren't torn, uh, torn down and, uh, and buildings put up on, on tiny streets. Uh, it, was a, it was about a year and a half long process, uh, and I think that we are just starting to see the success from that decision back in, uh, when it was first uh, implemented in 2009, 2010. That's good. Um, you know, I'm sure you, you can't wait to see the, the end results of well, it's a process. Economic development is a process. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who think that you know economic just ha economic development just happens, um, but no, it, it, it doesn't just happen. It takes people to, who are willing to invest in their community, people who are willing to uh, take risk, people who are willing to 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 see a vision or uh, and, and implement that vision. And you know, if they told you, they I guess recommended you or asked you to to uh, to run, they must have seen all those qualities in you already. Uh, I would hope so. Thank you. <laughs> um, could you give us a uh, quick, uh, I guess, an outline of how one of those projects would, uh, if, if you have any particular that you can break down for us? Uh, uh, so, like you say, well, I want to do or fix this problem. How would you go about? So, uh, one of the issues that I have mentioned uh, previously to you and to other vet organizations, um, I have also done housing. Uh, 
uh, work on a number of housing issues. And I worked with uh, the Jericho Project to put up the, uh, to get the approvals for the uh, development over on 194th Street between Briggs and Bainbridge, or, or between Briggs and, 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 and one of the side streets. And one of the questions that I had was, why isn't there any uh, housing for veterans that includes their families? I've always believed that uh, a family uh, provides a strong support structure for a veteran, especially a veteran who has uh, uh, recently come back from a, a war or, or from, from some other type of employment. And to say that, you, that we don't develop uh, housing for veterans and their families, and that it, and we read it in the news every day, you know, there are people who are homeless, veterans with their families that are homeless, or you know, the wife and the kids have to live someplace while the, the veteran is homeless. I think it's a shame. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you know, veterans. Uh, they they go. They serve our country. They serve our country, knowing the risk that they put themselves in. And something as simple as uh, designing family uh, housing for families, so that the the veteran can be with their children and their spouse, and raise their kids in the neighborhood, and send their kids to neighborhood schools, and invest in the neighborhood. I I, I can't understand why there's so many roadblocks for that. So now the overall goal would, would be to help the veterans and their families. Um, what what part of I guess the starting process for the, the Jericho project would you have to to start with or, or try to Well, I, I understand that uh, organizations like the Jericho Project and, and other organizations they really do fight to combat homelessness among veterans, and there is a, a need, and I won't deny that there is a need uh, that there are plenty of uh, of veterans out there who. Uh, who are single, who don't have a support structure, who may have other needs where they have to tap into the VA hospital. But th that's what makes the 78th Assembly District special. We have the VA hospital right in our backyard. Uh, we have all those housing opportunities right in our backyard. Uh, I think that there needs to be some flexibility with regards to uh, how the state funds nonprofits so that they could develop affordable housing for veterans, provide programs uh, for workforce development for veterans. Uh, and so that that way they can have a stable home, and that way they, they can contribute back to the community. Now the Jericho Project, the first one, the first building in the Bronx, I believe, was the one right across the street from the VA hospital. Yes, and on Kings Ridge Yes, and then the second one was the one you just mentioned, and now they're building the third one. Did you have any, anything to do with that? Or uh, so the, the first one was not in Community Ward 7, so I didn't have uh, a say on that one. The third one, I am no longer part of the community board. I haven't been a part of the community board since October 2012. So I don't know the status of that development. But I know that the issues are still there. Uh, there is a housing crisis uh, for everybody. I think that there is a, it, that veterans need to not be forgotten in that, in that there is a crisis and that they also need housing. Yeah, if, I, if I'm correct, uh, based off my submissions and posts on the Bronx uh, North Democratic Party. Did anyone say that right? The group, the Facebook Northwest group. Bronx Democrats. Yes, there. I'm sorry. Okay, Northwest Democrats. Um, I, you're the first, um, I would say, politician to reach out to me, and this is basically really? our, yeah. This is our third. Uh, I, I want to say encounter. I think that sounds yeah uh, a little weird, but third our third encounter where we. We've had the opportunity to speak, and each time has always been very unique. Uh, one day you come in, and I have three people that I interview right on the spot. Uh, but you know, very receptive. You already knew all the issues that were going on, and all I can, I guess, my part in, in, um, uh, in I, you know, providing knowledge and you know what the current generation is looking at, and you were just super receptive on that. And on top of that, the people that were there, you have to go one of them. So it's, it's, a, it's a tight knit circle that we. we yes, I have a lot of fraternity brothers who are in uh, the Marines or in the Navy. So. And uh, it just shows that you know the veteran community, um, it's a very strong, tight knit community that wants to make some improvement. Um, with the uh, with the group on Facebook, um, Anthony Rubicchio. Rubicchio, thank you. You know, uh, you, him, and, and a few other members. We had uh, Cherise Palomino recently, mm -hmm. and I mean, you guys are actually bringing my spirits when it comes to the political sector uh, in a positive view. Where in the top, I mean, I, I mean, I can say three months ago it was very negative, um, but 
But um, I mean, how do you feel knowing that you know you are progressively pushing, and the veterans in the community see the work that you're doing? So, with regards to the interactions that we've had, I, I'm glad that you feel that way. I'm glad that you feel that you know you're, uh, I guess, uh, coming around to uh, your opinions on politicians. You know, a politicians. Um, you know, being a politician is not uh, an easy task. You know, there are a lot of people who have a lot of needs, and it, it depends on how much you're willing to go out and help them out. Now, with regards to you know, uh, outreach to veterans, uh, this is not anything new for me. Um, I have worked with the Bronx Vet Center. Uh, there was a good friend of mine, uh, a Sergeant Major, uh, Producer Juan Santiago, who passed away a few years ago. But I worked with him on trying to get a uh, point. Uh, veterans in the right direction for either job placement or workforce development or even how to start their own business. Um, I, I've had experiences with the VA hospital uh, with my own father who is a Vietnam veteran. Um, and so, you know, I, I work with them and I work with other people who uh, who are at the VA hospital and I can say that I, I have had a positive relationship with them and I think that it, that more needs to be done, honestly. So now with your, with your uh, you said your father was being on that one, correct? Yes. Now with him, you know, I'm assuming if, if something's going on and with you with your political background, I'm sure he nudges you once in a while saying, hey, what's going on? And it, it gives you a more sense of, you know what, this is a sense of urgency that I, I need to jump on. Well, I mean, also my father has a lot of health issues, and so that's where, um, you know, my passion for public health and public health issues, and then seeing the issues that my father has, uh, you know, a, it's a sort of a natural mix uh, or, or match. I, I've been doing it for, for quite a while. I help out where I can. I always feel like there's more to be done. And uh, that's just you know, the way we got to keep continuing to operate. Put our hands to the plow and move forward. And how does he feel about your, your running for this? He, he was very skeptical in the, in the beginning. Uh, you know, I guess old Puerto Rican father, uh, he, uh, you know, he had uh, his... Um, his perceptions of uh, political office, um, as I'm sure many people do. Uh, he, he had his concerns, he didn't want me to get involved with certain people, and, and I understand, but at the same time, um, you know, him and my mother have always told me never to turn your back on people. Um, even when you're struggling, don't turn your back on people. And so that's kind of stayed with me. And there are a lot of needs, you know, a, a lot of needs outside of just the veteran needs uh, that are in the 78th district. We have had double-digit unemployment uh, before the recession. Uh, we have had, uh, what, you know, crime rates or chronic gang problems, uh, chronic issues that prohibit uh, communities from bouncing back. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, stalled economic development, and so now that a lot of things are starting to move forward, uh, you know, we just need to stay on top. Of it. You know, I, I tell people, uh, just going back to the business uh, issue for for a moment. Uh, that this is politics, right? There's always only one seat or one position on the top, and uh, you have people pushing them up and pulling them down. But this is business, right? You have people pushing you up and pulling you down, but there's more room on the top. And I think that that's where we have to get not only the residents in the district, but veterans to understand, hey, you know, this is something you should take advantage of. Well, so now, to, to keep within the platform, anything, housing, uh, economic uh, development, and health, you know, those are huge. Uh, you know, those are huge platforms to, to, to go through. Um, luckily, um, you know, I hope that Vet Talk can help you reach more on the veteran community, obviously, because you're affected within that you're a huge portion within your district. Uh, well, we wish you well as well on um, making the seat. Now, you mentioned something regarding the Bronx. The Bronx is, I don't think the Bronx is as an anomaly in itself when it comes to the political. Um, system, but uh, so now you you already have a great platform to go through. Um, you're only competing with uh, one person at the moment. Um, well, actually, can, can that change or no? Show, show. They, it's up into the last day. Can somebody else jump in? Or? Oh no, no, no. The petition process is done. All right, so it's just you and another person. Yeah. Um, so it, I mean, literally, there's a fifty-fifty chance. Now, if you get in the seat, um, now you're gonna have to deal with, I guess, the system. That we consider very um, tough with. I mean, you, your background is uh, um, well well connected within the political system, but now you're in a 
take the files that you launch from the background but how do you see yourself fitting in with the rest of the community in the political system? Uh, so as I mentioned to, uh, to people, I like the officials, particularly in economically distressed areas, um, they have to lead from the front. Uh, there's none of this where you know you're you're not there or you are someplace far away where people can't reach you, uh, and, and then you're part of the problem when nothing gets done. Uh, you know we've also heard that the Bronx is you know the poorest uh, county in, in 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 the country or the poorest uh, congressional district in the country for 30 years. But if in 30 years you're saying the same thing, then you're part of the problem. Let me see, uh, just to give a quick statistics regarding the Bronx, I mean, we have, um, based off the of zip code, we have one of the highest SUV rates. Um, when it comes to voting in New York City, one of the lowest. One of the lowest in New York City alone, uh, I think is about maybe 12%, the last numbers I saw. And the Bronx, as a borough, is uh, close to 8% out of that total. So yeah. that's, uh, yeah. that's a little shameful, mm -hmm. but uh, now you're going to be combating these issues. and. And um, yeah. there's there's a a lot of people that I've spoken to before I decided to run have always felt um, that it's almost hopeless. Like the situation's not going to change. People are not going to change. Nothing's going to change. And uh, I, I mentioned this uh, at another uh, locale that you know we have to find a way to bring hope to people. We have to find a way to do things so that uh, they can begin to open up. We have a lot of great resources here. You know the Bronx. If it was a city by itself, it would be the ninth largest city in the country. That's, a, that's, that's something to say right and, and if you just look at the area where the 70th, the 70th district is, uh, we are talking about some of the, the best tourism opportunities, the, uh, the best public uh, transportation infrastructures, uh, you know, some of the, the, the most affordable housing, even though it's still expensive compared to other places. Uh, we have all these assets, and sometimes, you know, there are people who are so negative or, or feel so hopeless about a situation that they can't see the, the stuff that we have. They can't see the people who are struggling to try to make uh, life better for, for everyone over here. And that's what I want to do. I want to help people see that there, are, there is an opportunity, that there is the potential for growth, that there is potential for themselves to be a part of that process. You know, we always have this, this fight between urban blight and gentrification. Um, I want to find that middle ground and say, well, let's get urban renewal starting with the people who are living here. Um, we're going to take a short break. Now, when we come back, we'll be uh, talking about uh, positive issues with the Bronx because obviously we love the Bronx. That's and second, right. the second is uh, the political system itself within the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My name is Gonzalo Duran. Uh, I was in the United States Marine Corps for eight years. In 2008, I was deployed to Iraq, and I lived next to the burn pits out there. Unfortunately, at that time, I, didn't, I wasn't aware that it was affecting my lungs. Well, with the burn pits, they, they weren't being properly regulated, and so they were burning anything and everything you can imagine. I lived in a shack maybe um, less than a mile away from the burn pit, so while they were burning, the dust, the breeze, et cetera, would come surround us, but it's not like you can pick up and move. With that issue, for me, it messed up my lungs, and unfortunately, I have a lot of skin issues as well. Fashion that has hearts is very unique. Now, with fashion, it's bringing you know, veterans with their artistic and their backgrounds and putting them in, in a different atmosphere for many and giving them the opportunity that they would not um, become, come in contact with. Originally, I wanted my colors to um, be military or my branch, but to, to keep it more uh, to the professional and simple look, I chose more of a black or grayscale um, outline. The shape of the insoles look just like a lung, so the inside will be the design of the lung. Um, then keeping with the, the phrase and, and the and the design of professional yet subtle with the motto. Um, the outside is very basic. Um, there's boss, um, boss that represents uh, a skyline. And then the bottom and inside um, have the different representations.
Hello, once again, we're with uh, Fernando Torado. Now, when we left off, we were uh, talking regarding the box and let's see the STD rates and and the uh, political aspects. So let's put a little more positive. Um, you said that the box, if it was the city in itself, it would I believe be, it would be the ninth largest city in the country. Not only that, we have the I want to say the fourth largest zoo in the world. Um, the Botanical Garden has. Um, the largest in the country? Uh, it, actually in the western, I want to say the western hemisphere. Western hemisphere. Uh, the ecological surveys and all the information data collected is basically the one used in, in the western hemisphere. We have great colleges. Great colleges for you. Go Rams. <laughs> yeah. Just have to go there too. Um, uh, we, we have also, as I mentioned before, one of the, the, the most uh, highly utilized public transportation services in, in the city. Uh, the Fordham Road Metro North Station, for instance, is the third busiest station in, in that network. Um, that station has the most reverse commuters uh, in the entire system uh, of the Metro North system. So that means people are going from here to work upstate, they're going to Connecticut. And upstate in Connecticut realize that there's a great worker pool here in the Bronx, and they're taking advantage of that. Uh, why is in the Bronx doing more to take advantage of that? Why can't we keep jobs here and spending here and, 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 and attract the people here to, to continue to work? Well, one of the reasons uh, or that we can speculate is the political system that we're facing right now, which you're about to jump in, and I'm sure you're going to bring your new, um, your new people, your new end, your new agendas to, to combat this. Um, but you now you also face the dilemma with we have this system called the Bronx, where we have political... Uh, candidates that have been dieted, removed, empty spaces, etc., etc. Um, not to be so negative about that, but well, well, how do you feel that you're going to be different in that approach? Well, first off, I have a proven track record of my commitment here to uh, folks in the Bronx, and particularly in, in the district. Uh, that overlaps with the 78th Assembly District. Uh, people have seen what I've done and, and know what I can bring to the table. So I would say, uh, that first, uh, with regards to you know the issues of uh, of the indictments, you know that it's unfortunate that that people have taken the the time uh, of, or I should say that they've taken the public's trust and they and they've abused that, and they use it for either personal gain or for for uh, for issues that are you know bordering on ethical uh, or on the ethical border. Uh, you know, it, it, it's something that, at the end of the day, uh, voters have to be the ones that, that make that decision. You, you put that person into office. You, uh, by your ch uh, choice to either vote or not vote, by your choice to be part of that process, um, you know, these things continue to happen. I mean, the very fact that I'm here talking to you as a veteran, uh, veterans go to fight for um, that I write to protect the freedoms that we enjoy that uh, unfortunately way too many people take advantage of or, or, or they don't put the, the proper amount of respect that, it, that they're supposed to. Um, and that goes back to, again, the, the cycle of hopelessness versus corruption versus you know, uh, negativity versus uh, uh, inactivity. So somebody's got to step in there and break it. And I think that there's been a, a lot of great elected officials who have started to come up into the Bronx. I'm looking forward to more coming up into the Bronx, and I'm looking forward to being part one of those uh, elected officials who can make a difference for uh, people in the Bronx. Well, we have no doubt about that. We, uh, we expect great things to be doing. Now, you are only running against what we mentioned earlier, just one other person. Yes. Now, what do you what do you feel regarding the current situation? I, I remember, um, Reading and listening to a debate where he, your candidate, your what would be the the person? Uh, I, not to, I guess the, the the person that I'm I'm running for, uh, I'm running against for the seat. And now it didn't show up to the oh debate. the Bronx talk debate. Yeah. So I mean, again, that's unfortunate. I would have uh, enjoyed the opportunity to ask some very hard questions. Um, I was given the opportunity to ask some questions and then provide my own response. Uh, but I think that, you know, public officials, anyone who's serving the public uh, needs to respect the public. And I think that they need to take whatever opportunities it is to address uh, the public directly and, and let them know, 
here's where I stand, here's what I'm doing, here's where I'm at. If you have any criticisms, let me know. If you have any compliments, let me know as well. We don't have enough of that. And, uh, and, and I shouldn't say that that's a broad blanket. I think that that's something that's been lacking, particularly in, in this district. Now for the, the candidate that you're running against, is uh, Jose Rivera? Yes. Now I briefly met him, I want to say about a month ago. Um, you know, I don't really know what he stands for. One, I'm not in that district. Um, and two, Actually, you are. Yeah. Is yeah, this part this of the is part of the 78th district. You know, I always ask people, is this part of Belmont? Well, it's not necessarily part of the neighborhood of Belmont, but it is part of the district. You're like literally at the at the very border of it. You know what? Then that calls for me to take action on a couple of stuff right there. Yeah. Um, and and the people you serve, like literally, right right across the street, there in the district. A large portion of the people that we we serve um, as Devil Club Incorporated happens to be the veterans, with all you know, up into the Cambridge area down here, and mm -hmm. all over New York City. So. Um, I like that point broken down. But thank you very much for putting that out. Uh, now, what do you feel? Once again, I don't know his platform or what he's done with the community because I've never really looked into it. But what would be something different that you consider uh, a good position for you to oppose him on? Well, I, again, I'm going to point to, the, to my strong suit, which is economic development. I've had a very good relationship with uh, many people in the business community uh, in this district. Uh, I have done things to either help them uh, with uh, with specific issues or helping them to build their, their association or to be an advocate for them. And again, for me, the best social program is always going to be a job. Uh, a job will do more, more than any other social program that, that we could put out there. Obviously, we need social programs to help people that are in need, but we need to put our people to work. We need to put people to to, uh, to give them the skills that they need so that they can go out and find a job, then for themselves in, the, in that sense, and, 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 and contribute back to society. And and those are, but the way I like to look at it is that, you know, today I came from Senator Perkins' uh, veteran uh, fair up in uh, Harlem. Now, there are dozens and dozens of uh, organizations there. Some national, some local. The point is, the, there's stuff already situated that's out there to help, whether it's the veteran community or the, or the general population. The problem is, is that let's say the knowledge of the rest of the people to to go get it or the cracks that. The way I feel is that a lot of veterans have issues with. Um, we fall into these categories where there's cracks that we are denying a lot of these programs and funding. Um, how how would you address that to me to, to I guess, correct it or, or try to, as a, maybe a possible, um, my, my possible assembly, uh, assemblyman soon, how would I go approach you in that? Those, those so that is on an individual by individual basis, so I would want to know what the issue is so that we can try to work out a solution. I know that a lot of uh, the services that are out there in general, uh, but also for the uh, for the veterans community, they don't receive a, enough uh, uh, publicity. At, uh, they, there's not enough outreach done because there's not a budget for it. And so doing things so that people can take more advantage of these programs so that people can have uh, the resources uh, to develop and to, and, and to grow as a person and, and grow in their community, that needs to change. Um, again, going back to core needs, if people don't have their core needs met, right, a job, a house, uh, support structure, uh, then they can't really do much more after that, and we have to try to help people when they can on an individual level. So now the big stuff are done. Now let's try to take care of the little things so we can get the action taken for each individual um, huge problem. So we're going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll try to find out more information on how we can help you with your outcome. My name is Gonzalo Duran. Uh, I was in the United States Marine Corps for eight years. In 2008, I was deployed to Iraq, and I lived next to the burn pits out there. Unfortunately, at that time, I, didn't, I wasn't aware that it was affecting my lungs. Well, with the burn pits, they, they weren't being properly regulated, and so they were burning anything and everything you can imagine. I lived in a shack maybe um, less than a mile away from the burn pit, so while they were burning, 
the dust, the breeze, et cetera, would come surround us, but it's not like you can pick up and move. With that issue, for me, it messed up my lungs, and unfortunately, I have a lot of skin issues as well. Fashion that has hearts is very unique. Now, with fashion, it's bringing you know, veterans with artistic and their backgrounds and putting them in, in a different atmosphere for many and giving them the opportunity that they would not um, become, come in contact with. Originally, I wanted my colors to um, be military or my branch, but to, to keep it more uh, to the professional and simple look, I chose more of a black or grayscale um, outline. The shape of the insoles look just like a lung, so the inside will be the design of the lung. Um, then keeping with the, the phrase and, and, the, and the design of professional yet subtle with the motto, um, the outside is very basic. Um, there's boss, um, boss that represents uh, a skyline and then the bottom and inside um, have the different representations. To the audience uh, tuning in, uh, we're here with Fernando Torado, running for the 78th District. Uh, so far we've gone over your, uh, your background in the political uh, sector and what you've done within the community, why you're running, and, and um, a large portion of it is for the veteran community. I even received some knowledge that I am within the 78th District, so uh, I, I can assume you'll be receiving a lot of stuff from us very shortly. Not a problem. Um, now, our, it's very fortunate that the, the, the work that we do here is always um, something's coming up, let's do it, let's knock it out, and we'll be happy to uh, start sending you some of the information, whether you want or not. Sure. Um, just to keep you within uh, the aspect of what we're doing for the veteran community, since your background is so um, not only is a personal thing, but also uh, a subject that you, you're fighting for. Um, is there any way, where, where would the viewers get information from you if they wanted to contact you, vote for you, sure. um, etc.? So, uh, I'm primarily on Facebook. Uh, it's facebook.com slash vote the 2014. Um, they could also go to vote the album.com, um, which will take them to a uh, fundraising page, uh, and my email, both the album at gmail.com. Yeah. And any uh, local events coming up? Uh, so we do have a number of local events. I have my fundraiser actually here in Belmont uh, tomorrow, Thursday, from 7 to 9 at the Bronx Beer Bowl. Uh, two young gentlemen uh, that I know for a while uh, operate their beer hall. They're great entrepreneurs. They're a great example of what the next generation can do for the Bronx. Um, there is the, uh, the Committee of 100 Democrats. Uh, they have their annual barbecue on East 204th Street between Marshall and Parkway and uh, the, the Grand Concourse. So uh, it's always a great barbecue, free food, uh, uh, free entertainment. So I would invite people to come out to that as well. Um, and uh, there are a, a number of other events. Actually, you have another one here on, in Belmont on Park Avenue, on, I believe, on the 7th which is a Sunday. Um, they have a major festival going on here. So I plan to, to be at all of these. In addition, I, I what I have been doing to uh, meet the constituents and meet people and, and let people know who I am and what I'm doing, I've been having these various meet and greets uh, throughout the district. I've been uh, meeting people at diners, at coffee shops, at delis. Uh, we, uh, we take out uh, funds for the for, for coffee. We, we treat coffee, uh, everyone with some coffee and discussion. Uh, and it's, I've had some very good feedback on that. You know, people people open up when there's food. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you're trying to do something new and innovative uh, and and people are hesitant, you have to try to make them feel at ease. And that's what I want people to do, feel at ease when they're around me uh, so that we can talk issues. The same way that you and I are talking issues right now. I, I don't know, I, I'm actually pretty uh, scared of the... Uh, uh, or, uh, what? <laughs> just joking. <laughs> you're very, you're very uh, um, hard to talk to. It's oh, hard. really? Oh, it's sorry. a very difficult it's conversation to have. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but in all seriousness, uh, yeah, there, there are plenty of opportunities uh, where we could go around the community. I am not afraid to go out to any community and, and talk to people uh, uh, and enjoy a cup of coffee with them. 
Well, you know, in, in my um, in my capacity, um, you know, I've made this offer not only to the Facebook group that we both with, and I'll be happy to do it uh, on video as well. Um, between today and your, your the day for the election, or any day after that, if you want to do anything um, for for yourself, uh, for the veteran community, I'll be happy to to have my face open. That's fine. That's fine. A coffee maker, and let's uh, let's just talk. So be it. Um, and then, uh, if that's all for how people can reach you, I want to thank you for coming. And, My pleasure. Uh, Fernando Toronto, Assemblyman for District Seventy Eight, coming up. I, I also want to point out that there are uh, three other candidates who are running with me: um, Muhammad John for State Committeeman, uh, Ricky Martinez for uh, Male District Leader. And Rosa Velasquez for female district leader. So uh, we are running together as a team, and uh, I hope that everyone can come out and support us all so that we can move the progress forward. Thank you for coming.